Hello everybody, and welcome to, technically, episode 4 of the Elden Ring series. I've technically already done episode 4, but my recording program had a bit of a hiccup, and I lost the entire thing. So, I figure I'll do episode 4.5, and just cover everything that was done in that, so it doesn't seem like I've just mysteriously gotten stronger. I even went through the effort of... <laughs> making a secondary character to cover most of this. Because we're pretty early in the game, it only took me about 20 minutes. And if you look in the upper left, I even named him Oops. <laughs> Aptly named. So one of the things that I did is, of course, upgrade the rapier. In the previous episode, we had pointed out that we have about 25 smithing stones, which is quite an excess, honestly. So I figured I'd get the first three upgrades on the rapier. I don't have that on this character, but that more or less emulate at the point. But the important part of this particular episode is, of course, challenging this dragon, the great mighty beast. We shall challenge the dragon to a race, because I am not interested in fighting this thing. <laughs> we're basically in an endgame area. Well, pseudo endgame. So we're just gonna run right by him, pretend he doesn't exist. Ignore all of the epic music, ignore the epic dragon behind us shooting fire. Pretend it's not even happening. We're doing this so that we can go and get a specific accessory. One of the best in the game. Ignore the lightning too. It's all a figment of your imagination. Second boss? I don't know what you're talking about. Never seen it before. Just keep running. Go behind this big old tree into this airlift thing and have a little jump. Now that we are up here, you'll see another boss, just a big old dragon, probably the biggest dragon, off to the right, which, you know, we'll ignore him too. These are all problems for future us. Our goal is actually inside this fort. There is a truly wondrous accessory inside here, and we are just going to sprint through and hope that we don't die. You look at that wood, it's hard to see a little bit there. If you look at that wood right there, there's kind of a shiny accessory behind it. We're going through all of this, we can get to that golden glowy accessory. So now we sprint in a bit of a panic, hoping that we don't die in the process of making our way to that accessory. Yes, that was a room full of odd bat people. We're just going to ignore it. Bit of a theme for this episode. We're on a bit of a fetch quest time crunch. Dectus Medallion right. We'll be going for the left one shortly. We just need to get this accessory first. That Dectus Medallion, once you have the left and right piece, which we'll have in not too long. Once you have both of them, you can access a portion of the game that is, I'd say like mid to end game-ish. Oh, big rat. Just don't look at the big rat. Don't look at anything. Nothing is real. Gonna grab this accessory and do what's called a pro gamer move and quit the game. <laughs> and then go right back into it. Now the reason we do that is because it put all of the enemies back where they originally are, instead of, you know, in our face attacking us, so we can keep our souls. Now I think I only have, what is that, 230 souls, so it wasn't worth it for me to do it, but if you happen to be doing the same thing, it would be worth it. Now let's look at what we get for all that trouble. This is called the Radagon Sore Seal. It's what we just picked up. What it does is if you look at the stats on the right side of my screen, equipping it gives me plus five in vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity, which is quite the jump. The only downside is, if I hit triangle here to look at my damage negation, my physical damage negation goes from 26% to 15%, so I'm losing about 11% damage reduction across the field. So, this is insanely useful, but it does come at a price. Now that we've gotten that, we're basically going to ignore this entire portion of the map for a very long time. It's dangerous. We're not really supposed to be here yet. I just wanted that accessory. Hmm accessories. We are, however, going to head to this Third Church of America on the map. This is the place where the portal was behind the church. Once we head here, we'll be going south. It's not the most exciting episode. There's a lot of little things we have to do. And while I am passing by many, many enemies in the open world, if you're doing your own playthrough, feel free to kill them. It, it'll just make you stronger, better, faster. Daft Punk knows the rules. So we're just going to follow this kind of road. You can kind of see it beaten out of the grass here. 
And with the little glowy candles next to it. We're going to be following this road. Oh, there's poopy on the road. It's just excrement. There's some more. Sweet. Let's grab this map. Ignore the giant bear. Grab the loot next to it, though. Just keep picking things up and running past everything. While just heading straight south. Maybe a little southeast. There should be a merchant around here. If we just keep going this way. Ah, here we are. See the fire and the smoke. Through the fire and the flames, the economy burns on. Because we have the merchant here. And... While we can't afford anything he has, I don't think we need anything he has. When you come across these merchants, the most important things to buy are the cookbooks here. They allow you to craft different items. However, on Xbox, you can hit the X button, or on PlayStation, you can hit Square to look at what the cookbook will give you for a crafting recipe, and this guy just offers up a book that gives beast lore pots, and the other is Exalted Flesh. That can be good, however, I will not be buying it, and I didn't buy it on the other character either, because I won't remember to use it at all. I'll, I'll just forget. I know myself well enough. We're just going to keep heading south, ignoring enemies and the terrain. We're going to run into a little grace here on the side of a cliff of sorts. Go ahead and touch some grass. Restore your humanity. And now we are going to be charging down this fort. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's it's got a ballista. Never actually stood around long enough to see it shoot. We're going to be charging down this fort semi-stealthily. Sort of, not really, because one, it has, oh, right, unlock the map, it's right here. Fort Height West is where we are. It has a golden seed, which is good, of course, and inside, there's a cookbook we want for bleeding apparatuses and arrows and such, and there's also an Ash of War for bleeding, which is pretty nice. Let's go take out one more enemy, back to sneaking. <laughs> It's actually really simple, just being ignored by the pumpkin head. You know what, pumpkin boy? Come and play. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Oh, is that a demi-human? What? Man, these soldiers suck. Yeah, there you go. Pick a fight with the pumpkin head. I see these two duke it out. Oh, it seems a bit one-sided. Also, this guy is just in the bushes. Ooh, eliminated. All right, my turn. <laughs> these guys are pretty easy to deal with. You could just... Stand behind your shield and stab. Oh, another demi-human? Where do you guys keep coming from? Yeah, you can just stand behind your shield with them and stab. The trick to doing a build like this is that you usually want to stab from behind the shield while the enemy is attacking. If they hit you hard enough, you'll stagger just a little bit. You won't drop your block or anything, but you'll stagger and then you can't stab. But if you stab right before an attack hits your shield, you can stay in place and maintain your, well, aggression. Your DPS gives you a lot of opportunities. All right, we're going to be running straight into here and ignoring all the bombs being thrown at us. Hop in this corner real quick, because as far as I know, the bombs can't reach us here. And stab a few rats to death. Dead rats. <laughs> just ignore all the explosions behind us. I guess I didn't have to come over here. It's just blood roses. I'm going to come up this way. Watch out for these barrels here, because they will explode if, yeah, one of those hits them. They're like gunpowder barrels. Ouch. Double ouch. Let's go ahead and chug. Let's go ahead and take one of these guys out. Get away from them barrels. They're dangerous. Ouch. You can throw them straight down? Since when? It's an insanely direct throw. He basically just held it out and ouch. Who? What? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna get inside the room. It's less dangerous in here. Chug some more. And this is the cookbook that we're after. The Medic Warrior Cookbook 6? Yeah, number 6. There's like 15 of every book. Now we're gonna run up here and deal with these damn splody boys. Oop, barrel. Watch out for that. Did one of them fall down? Is that? That seems to be what's happening. Okay, you know what? We'll ignore that one. Come over here and take care of Ballista Boy. Now he's a dead ballista boy. Oh, oh man. Splody bastards. Alright, this is the guy that we're after. He's got an Ash of War, like that, that we want. Now, just blocking and guarding can work against him, but it's fairly dangerous. Because he does a lot of stamina damage, and if he keeps hitting you while his weapon is all bloody like that, it can hurt quite a bit. Because he'll proc bleed status on you. And that takes a percentage of your health. But we just got the Ash of War, Bloody Slash. One of the better Ashes of War in the game. We might even put it on our rapier at some point. Because bleed is good. Very good. It's most effective on quick weapons that 
just kind of poke enemies to death, like the rapier. It's kind of exactly what it does. And, now that we've gone up this ladder, we have the Dectus Medallion left. Let's go ahead and make our way back down here. Actually, we don't even have to do this. We can fast travel from up here to the Waypoint Ruin Cellar. That is our current goal. We're going to be heading more south. Hip hip hooray. Actually, is there anything I need to interact with over here? Yes, gotta upgrade the flasks. We'll be doing a lot of that in this episode. It's one of the reasons I decided to make a second character just to recap what happened. We picked up a lot of things that upgrade the flasks, so it's important that I cover that before we go back to the other character. Let's go ahead and run past this little brigade of nerds. Just keep heading straight south. Again, if this is something that you're following for your own playthrough, you should take the time to actually enjoy the map and look around at things. I have got a ludicrous amount of hours in the game, so I know exactly where I want to go, for the most part. This particular route has technically been mapped out because I, well, already technically did episode 4. Feels weird to actually know what my next move is. That means the enemy can know what my next move is. Let's go ahead and run past these weird phallic stone worms and pick a fight with the boss in the sever jail now this fight is going to seem like a joke and you'll see why it's honestly impressive how good the sword and board strategy works with these guys because as you can see he does virtually no stamina damage the only thing he can do is proc bleed on us you can see that bar above his health it's sort of like in the middle of the screen <laughs> but he's also already halfway down on his health Oh no, one blood loss proc. And he's almost dead already. Let's go ahead and chug some Estus. <laughs> Such an easy boss like this. There you go. All you really have to do is hold block and mash the attack button. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. All right, now that we've beaten the boss, we're going to go ahead and head sort of east-ish to this little cliff-type area so that we can fall into these graves and make our way down. That's our goal, is down right here, and we might take some damage from this one. Oh, nope, somehow we got lucky. Then we're going to cross this bridge down here. Again, not stopping for the enemies because, well, yeah, you just saw that, I'm assuming. That was a ballista. I'm not going to take that to the face while trying to deal with soldiers pick up any loot between us and the objective, and at the end of the bridge is a nice little grace. This episode is more tutorial than episode. We're going to be passing through this underpass here, follow the road, until we will be coming across a merchant. Again, picking up the items as we go. There's no reason not to. You can also take out the scarab if you are so intrigued. This is the mighty shot skill for bows, which can be good based on what you put it on. In general, it's almost like magic in terms of damage because the mighty shot hits like a truck normal arrows by themselves are pretty weak but at the cost of fp you can make one arrow insanely powerful now we're gonna go ahead and touch some grass here and then see what the merchant has of course the important items on this one would just be the cracked pot and the stone sword key everything else is collectible stackable farmable etc now if we look at the grace we have the merchant and the grace here Back into the left, there is a airlift. I don't really know the actual term for these, but we're going to be looking at this tower here. That tower right in the background. We're going to jump at it using this airlift so that we can gain access to the items inside of it. This item, the great turtle shell, and I guess this too, a warming stone, which you can drop down to temporarily have a bubble of healing around you or in the area that it was dropped. And we can jump on this airlift again, which reduces all fall damage. And now we'll take a peek at that turtle shield. Now, if we look at its damage negation, it's actually kind of poor. 87% physical, and then everything else is pretty weak. And it only has 49 guard boost. All around, it's not the best shield. But, if we hit the switch display button and look at its description, the turtle is a symbol of tirelessness, and the shield boosts stamina recovery speed. If you are running a build that requires a large two-handed weapon, for instance, you would want the turtle shield on your back to increase your stamina recovery. But that's enough of that. We're going to go ahead and rest at this grace and pass until nightfall because we have a knight's cavalry to eliminate. This one actually has a skill that can be useful based on your build. We might even use it at some point in this playthrough. Hi buddy, ready to play? Looking all scary and spoopy. It's not Halloween yet. So you can follow the same general rule with this guy, and that is to essentially just strafe around him with your shield up and stab when he goes in for attacks. 
The only time to look out is during, yeah, obviously, multi-hit combos. If your guard is broken, you should probably roll away and get your stamina back. Apart from that, this truly is trivialized by Sword and Board. The only downside, of course, is waiting for him to decide to attack, because chasing him down on foot is not the plan. <laughs> so much of this fight really is just waiting him out. Gonna play yet? Okay, cool. Oh, that one apparently just went right past my shield. It, like, went over my head or something. That was unusual. Come on, buddy. Again, that, that that was weird. I don't know why he was able to just go past my shield there. It's probably because I'm strafing too much. If I just stand still, I'll be fine. And it happened again. Maybe it's just the flail knight that's like this. Either way, he doesn't hit very hard. <laughs> just keep trading blows with the weakest weapon in the game. If you could just come this way, Mr. Knight's Cavalry, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Come on, buddy. I think the horse might die before he does. Yeah, it seems like it's likely to happen. Which means we can stab him on the ground. You can only sneak in about two hits per interaction. Then he runs away. Oopsie doops. Some attacks can stagger you hard enough that you don't have time to raise your shield. So you want to roll with some of them, but it's rare. They don't usually have combo potential like that. Yeah, that horse is about to go down. Game over, horsey. Let's go ahead and just penetrate him. Whoopsie. You've been penetrated. Ash of War Barricade Shield. I mean, the flail is something. It certainly is a weapon of all time. But the Ash of War Barricade Shield can be very good. Can be. I haven't even grabbed the thing that gives us access to that stuff yet, so we'll have to show that when we move back to the original character for the series. I suppose since we have the souls, it'd be a good idea to just pump vigor for now. Hmm. Healthy boy. Now we've got a handful of fetch quests, essentially, to take care of. From the site of grace with the traitor, we're going to be running between that mountain and that tower. We're going to be running up a hill. We're making our way toward one of the churches, one of the many churches, so that we can get these sacred tears. Those are the items that increase how efficient your flask of tears heals. So it will increase how much health you recover or how much FP is recovered when you have the blue one, but I don't really drink the blueberry juice. I'm more of an OJ guy. And we're going to be hugging the cliffside here, just running straight down. If we just keep following this cliff face, eventually we'll come across the Site of Grace, occasionally picking up the doo-doo on the floor. Here we are, Site of Grace. Now, I should point out that this Site of Grace is actually a very good place for farming this, the Root Resin which is right by this tree. There's three of them. Every single time you touch the grace, those allow you to craft the greases, which get applied to your weapons. I'll craft one right now. So the way this works is that if I wanted to, I could, on the right side of the screen here, you see this glow. I'm going to assign the blood grease. If I use this, it applies bleeding effects to my weapon. So now you can see that glowing effect on it. Now, if I look at it in the menu, I guess you don't see it, but it does have a bleeding effect. I There's nothing that's tough enough that I could prove it, I guess. But that's what the greases do. And if you want those, then you're going to want those root resins. So you touch grass, you look at that big tree over here. I know there's a lot of trees, but if you're at the grace, you look at this tree, just turn 90 degrees to the left. It's this one right here. Three root resins over and over. And when you pick them up, there's a chance to get anywhere from one to, I think four is actually the max, but you'll rarely see that. Just keep this in mind. This is a good location. This is the ailing village outskirts. There's your root resin farm. Enjoy. However, that is not our goal. I don't really need them right now, and I always know where to go if I need more. Instead, we're going to continue south, just straight south past everything. Of course, picking up all the garbage. That's because we want to enter this church. Grab what's in front of here. The sacred tear. Bars. And the spell that's in here. Now we just get enough distance from the enemies that we can open our map, pick up some doo-doo on the ground. And now that we're not being bothered, we will fast travel back to the merchant here. The Castle Morn Rampart. We'll be traveling to this place quite often. At least in this episode. Now that we're here, we're going to be heading down another location. Imagine. From the Merchant and the Grace, we'll be heading down here. We came from this path, and we're going to be coming up the right side of it here. 
toward the golden tree. Running past this lake, even if you're stopping and killing everything, I wouldn't bother with this lake. It's just a bunch of dogs, and that's annoying. Go ahead and hop up here to the left, near the cliff wall, and touch some grass. And then continue following this wall, till you see a nice little bridge here. That tree is kind of our objective, more or less. I'm gonna run past that guy. He is of no consequence. No reason to stop for him. Again, if you want to stop and kill things, you can. You will technically just be stronger than me by the time you do all of the things. Which is perfectly fine. There's never a point where you should think, oh, I'm too strong in the game. So, feel free to do that. You even might find some interesting weapons that you want to try. Most enemies in the game, I won't say all of them, but most enemies in the game follow the simple rule of if it looks like they're holding a weapon, you can probably get it. Up this path is a church, so we can get yet another sacred tier right over here. Bars. So we'll go ahead and grab that. If you look on the map here, we're on the northernmost portion of this sort of separated island via that bridge. With the ballista, go ahead and take a little trance through this graveyard and pick up the items in it. I don't think any of them are particularly valuable. Just a blood grease and some kind of shield that we probably will never use. But our objective now is to head sort of southwestish. Also, if you need animal bones, this is a good place to get them. Because we have a huge batch of these goat, deer, dogs, things, to farm for thin beast bones. And then, if you just keep heading a little bit south, you'll see another batch right here. If you've got magic, it's probably the quickest way to clear them out. Because this is a sort of proxy character, I'm not going to bother collecting most of the stuff, though. We, however, are going to be hugging this cliff face. If we hug this cliff face and keep it to our left, we will eventually run into a site of grace. Right here. And from this site of grace, you can see... <laughs> Church Turtle, the Almighty. And just to the right of that, is the kind of like peak right there. That little mountain is a church. You can see it, mostly destroyed. It's the pointy thing coming out of the earth. Let's go ahead and run right on past Church Turtle, right up to this church, and get this last sacred tear. After we get this, there's only one more thing to interact with in this area, and then we'll be making our way to Castle Morn, which is where the fun begins. So, we run right up here to the statue and get a sacred tear. Yummy. And of course, touch the Site of Grace. There's no reason not to touch these. Just gives you a quick travel point in case you ever do want to come back. Now that we've done that from the church, we're going to be heading south. Of course, you know making sure we don't fall to our death, but that's our goal, so just keep heading south. We're gonna be heading down to that beach there. Hmm, the beach. Seems like beach weather to me. And this is our last stop, this shack here, because it has a merchant and some grass. Touch it. Here we go, the isolated merchant. And he has a lantern, which if you have the souls for it, you really should get this. It's worth it. And I'll show you why, if I can pop enough souls for it. Uh, We'll see. That should be 1,200. Yeah, we need a little bit more. Pop one more here, and that should be more than enough. Now, there are other merchants with lanterns, but this is the one that I usually get it from. You buy the lantern here, and of course, if you want, you could get the Lost Ashes of War as well. It's a bit expensive right now, but if you use this at Master Huggy, Mr. Huggy Bear at the, um, the Lost Table of Grace, our little home hub in the lower left corner of the map, he'll duplicate one of your Ashes of War so you can put it on multiple weapons, if you're into that kind of thing. Buying the stone sword keys isn't a terrible idea either. The reason you would want a lantern is that there are dark dungeons and caves in the game. If you have the lantern, you don't have to hold a torch, you are just always lit up. As you can see on my character's hip here, there's just a lantern, and it's pretty effective, just about as effective as a torch. And that's it. That's everything to do with this island, that we care about at least. We don't need all the rest of that crap. I'm sure there's very valuable things, but not valuable enough for me to care. Now we're going to head, yet again, back to the Castle Morn Rampart. And we're going to head south to, well, Castle Morn. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to ensure that it's nighttime first. There's one more fun little boss to handle. I might actually die to this thing. I don't know why, I just have the weirdest time. Let's go ahead and upgrade our flask here. Several times. We're now at seven flasks. And there might actually be more, because I didn't pick up any golden seeds in this proxy character. But we're at plus four with the tears, which is pretty great. But our goal right now is to pass until nightfall. It might already be nightfall. Yeah, it was at the end of it. But still, pass until nightfall. And because the game is sometimes finicky, I'm going to touch grass again, just in case. I'm going to reset the area. Now we're going to be heading down through this break in the wall. 
end to the right. That is our objective. Well, not straight right. First, let's head down the middle and get this map here. See this strange pillar? It's going to have a map on this side right there. I'm going to grab that while avoiding, yep, that thing right there. There is a very large man off in the distance. Kind of hard to see it through the fog. But he is pew-pewing at us <laughs> while we collect these things. We're going to come up here and grab that golden seed as well. Then turn around and come up this cliff. Keep rolling around up this way till we find this castle wall. This is our goal. Coming up here at the castle wall. And we might have to kill these bats because it seems like they're going to get in our way. So we'll prioritize that first. If you have a bow or anything, you should prioritize using that. But the shield and rapier should serve perfectly efficient against them, as long as you separate them. If this one could just come close enough to the ground to be stabbed. Thanks, Chief. I appreciate it. Now, the reason we killed them is because they're occupying a spot that has, um, uh, well, you'll, you'll see what it has occupying it. It's, um, it's a beautiful creature, really. Everybody loves to see strange baby bird. I, t I don't know why this thing has the, the weird bird face. Now, sword and board isn't the best strategy against this thing. You might have to pin yourself to its, like, rib cage, maybe? I'll try it right now. Testing time. Now that we've upgraded our flasks, we can make a surprising amount of mistakes before we actually die. Yeah, see, if you just stick to his rib cage or his uh, strange baby bird crotch thing, and you keep your shield up, you'll be just fine. Just watch out for any instances where he might start lunging back. Remember to prioritize not taking damage over doing damage. Always with this game and many other games. Now he has put some distance between us and I don't know why. He's trying to like assert his dominance by walking over that building. You having fun over there, weird baby bird? You want to come and play or? Okay. Are you, are you happy now? Now that you've taken out that tree? It's awfully rude, wasn't it? That tree didn't do nothing to you. Man, we do no damage to this thing, <laughs> being my toothpick. Although if you're in any which way playing along, you probably have a plus three rapier, because, again, I, this is a proxy character. I'm just gonna continue to aggressively stab this thing in the booty hole until it dies. A sad, sad baby bird death. All right, our health is low enough that we're gonna wanna use at least one flask of crimson tears. Yeah, see, that little pose he's striking is the only one that's really dangerous with this strategy. Because, well, he just kind of lunges his head straight down. Also, he ran away again. He's asserting his dominance on the area. You just fly back, maybe? I don't want to go over where the archer man is. Uh, baby bird. Here, baby bird. Come here. You know, if you've got magic <laughs> or a bow, you win right here. This is it. This is the win. This baby bird appears to be stuck. I'm just going to go down there with him, though. Just get back to stabbing him in the booty hole. You know, this is actually be a really good time for a blood grease. I will see if I can. Oh, I can't craft in the middle of a fight. However, we did pick up two in one of the previous areas. I will apply it now that he's flown away again. There we go, blood grease. Let's see if I can get up there with him. I have to unlock horse. Yeah, there we go. Get back up here. Oh, okay. That's great. He's got that air supremacy going on. This is uncontrolled. Just, just stop, please. There you go, baby bird. I, wow, the camera is just a freaking out. This is really uncomfortable. See if we can get a bleed rock on him, though. If we hit him enough times, it should work. Just gotta watch out for that peck. There it is. There's the peck. And there it is again. Does a lot of stamina damage, too. Just keep stabbing, baby bird. Chug, and get back to Stabby Stab. Stop. Stop with the air supremacy. You know, his blood grease actually lasts a surprising amount of- Oh, no, it's gone. I had to talk. Well, we've got Baby Bird down about half health. I just rolled, and I really didn't need to. Force of habit. Yeah, see that overhead peck that he does is the only actual dangerous move. Let's go ahead and get back to stabbing him. Here comes the peck. No? Oh, like a ground punch. I don't see that one often. Not enough damage to go using a flask yet, but... Oh, okay. How did that hit? Now we'll use a flask. Baby bird, don't fall off the cliff. Come on now. It's me and you. mono e mono mono e baby bird. Birdman thing. Just get back to stabbing. He just moves around so much, you know? Here comes the peck. Yeah, saw that one coming. Again. 
double pack. Moving up in the world, huh? Let's see if I can start stabbing him in the head. Maybe that'll do an appropriate amount of damage. Ouch. Nope. 55 versus aiming for the body. We'll check that right now. Oh no, he broke my guard. What will I ever do? Oh, crap. He broke my guard. What will I ever do? 36 to the body. So almost half. A little more then. Seems like getting close to him and then strafing to the right confuses him. And the terrain. The terrain also confuses him. Please, baby bird, don't run from me. Stop. We're not fencing. <laughs> Stop using the fancy moves. Just stand still and let me poke you to death. I'd appreciate it. Ooh. Okay, yeah, you gotta be careful with that. Uh, if you touch your analog stick or anything and shift to locking onto his head instead of his body, you will be in a big regret situation. Yeah, if, if you are going to attempt this yourself, I would personally suggest applying the Ash of War blood slash to yourself beforehand. Oh my goodness, things are happening. Chug. I see that heals most of my health bar. Baby bird, come down here. Come on. This would have been so much easier if I wasn't running the proxy character. Yeah, there goes the poke. I haven't been playing save at all against this guy, but still. Ah, so you can't just block that. Good. Ah, and there he goes again. Down into that area. We have to fight baby bird where he wants to fight. Not sure how that hit, but it didn't do much damage, so it's okay. Ouch. Again. I guess he can just bite right over the shield, so it kind of makes sense. We'll let him have a tantrum and use another Estus. Ouch. Well, just counteracted nothing, basically. Baby bird. Just forfeit already. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to prove just how efficient the shield and rapier thing works, and it truly is insane. I didn't think it was going to be this good when I was like, oh, it's probably the most broken build in the game. Oh, that's a grab. Okay, crap. This, that's not great. Ouch. Am I dead? Are you kidding me? Look at his HP. Look at that HP. So that's not okay. Are you kidding me right now? So here's what we're going to do, right? <laughs> we're going to cover Baby Bird in the next episode when I'm not using the proxy character because I know I haven't fought him with the other character. <laughs> can't believe that. It's the most Dark Souls thing I've seen all day. This has been episode 4.5, technically. I've technically done all this twice. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.